Hello, everyone. Howdy. Ooh. Howdy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dave, you look so different. Dave. Is that this makeup I've been using, it's, it's, it's working great. It's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, that's great. You must have gotten that at the f metaphysical uh, fair. Yes, yes. yes. Changes your entire appearance. <laughs> oh, Real life, right. like walkers and everything. So. Nice. <laughs> all right. We are here. We're back. It's the Three Tortured Souls. We got to sit in because Dave is on vacation. Vacation. Yeah, I know. Come Slacker. on. Priorities, Dave. Yeah. You know, I mean, how far away can you be? You can still be on the show. <laughs> anyway, so tonight we are going to talk about do-it-yourself testing devices um, for paranormal claims. So basically, like uh, the premise is basically I, I worked off of if people do dousing, um, if people use pendulums, or people use Ouija boards, or something like that. And I picked those three particular uh, topics because I already have <laughs> devices I built for them, so it was so easy. Um, oh, mostly because I have I had a conference today, so I needed something easy so I could. I literally came home, sat in the chair, started prepping. So, but that's the topic tonight. We're gonna get into a, a few different perspectives on this and uh, give you guys experiments. Uh, and I we have a video from John that we're gonna we're gonna watch and talk about which uh, is a, a do-it-yourself project, which looks pretty cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this, I think. But let's go with opening statements. Um, Tim, what do, you, what do you think? I like it. I have uh, – it actually – this topic reignited, reinvigorated an idea there that I go. have. Yes, thank you. That um, <laughs> we have so many ideas. Sometimes I just kind of think that – we have so many that they fall, many fall to the wayside after a little bit. I, I'm really excited for this one. So um, I think I'm just going to do it on a more small scale. So it's not so big. And then we can just see what's um, what's going to happen. But we'll right. get into it. It's um, it's I think it'll be a fun test. I don't know if you'd call it an experiment, but um, I look forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. I think the people who participate in it will enjoy it. Um, yeah. I do need I do need probably four or five volunteers and i think oh. i think i'll try to keep it um yeah tiffany that's about right i do forget them <laughs> especially after lots of wine um but yeah i um i do I, I think it's going to be pretty good i will see how it goes um i look forward to it i, I need to get a, a, a haunted item oh. or something at least that is alleged to be haunted. i know a guy I do. I, I do too. That's why I was really, I was yeah. really excited. Now I'm going to see that guy in, um, in August. So maybe yes. I might pick up something that's possessed. Or, Absolutely. We yeah. we can we can well, we can talk about that guy uh, after the show, and you know maybe you can just have your pick. You can yeah. pick something. So, or, or some things. But uh, all right, cool. So John, opening statements. What do you what do you think about this topic? I think the topic's pretty awesome. Uh, I wish I had known about a lot of this stuff back when I was first getting into the paranormal side, uh, the ghost hunting and stuff, um, mm -hmm. because all I knew was what was told from people who it was more about money and stuff. So getting some things that we do yourself type things is a great um, thing for people that just they don't want to go out and spend a lot of money on these things, but still want to test. The claims that are coming out um, right and stuff like that so and 
saving money is always a great thing. So, right. But yeah, just cool. great, great right. talk. I I feel the same way. I mean, I, I'm all about doing it on the cheap, but not being cheap about what you build. You know, that's and the trick. Yeah, there's that balance there. Yeah. So. I, I'm used. I have a mechanical background. I'm used to building stuff and putting stuff together and taking it apart. And usually, when I do put that back together, there are hardly any extra parts. I mean, there's some, but you know that always happens. <laughs> but I'm used to it. And and once I have a project where I start thinking about like how can I test this, I start brainstorming and like what do I have? What kind of supplies do I have in the garage? Let me look and and see if what I can build. Uh, and and some of that, some of the projects that I've come up with have come just because I'm standing in the garage going, what do I have? I have all this extra stuff. What can I make out of this? Let's find out. So, and like you said, John, it's being able to do something like this on the cheap is important because, I mean, we, none of us are rich. And if you can do it for five, ten dollars $10, great. Maybe $20, still great. Um, otherwise, you, you start looking online and you see actual devices, manufactured stuff, um, mass produced things that are going for 100, 150, you know, and up. So having a do it yourself solution is always going to be handy. And that's what we're going to get into. So, yep. um, I mean, I can, I have a f multiple objects. So how about I, I'll do one first and then we'll start going around and see what you guys have. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah, I'm in charge. That's what we're yeah, going to do. <laughs> that's right. You can kick me off the show. Ah, so actually, one of the things that I I did, and I wasn't planning on showing this, but I'll do it anyway. Because people have asked. Ugh, here's my Faraday box. <laughs> <laughs> so it says Faraday box. <laughs> Faraday box. Yeah. Are you um, sure it's the Faraday box? It is. I put that on there just to remind myself. So... <laughs> I built this a while ago and literally I was standing in my garage looking around and I'm like, I have all this, these two by fours that are left over from a different project. What am I going to do with them? I made a box. And then naturally I started like, what can I do? I need to make a Faraday box. I need to make one because I talked about it and I, I suggest it and, and recommend it to people. I need to build one. So <laughs> R2D2 is actually up there. Um, He's, he's, wait, wait, there he is, right there. <laughs> but I didn't make him. Anyway, so to make this, it was simple, two by four, just made a box frame. And then I uh, made layers. I, I wrapped it in layers, alternating between aluminum foil and uh, screening, aluminum screening for a screen door. So I bought, bought a, an entire roll of screen and just started wrapping it. And that's what you see. I don't know if you can see it that well. Um, let's see. You can see some of the, the screening there. Yeah. yeah. And then duct tape. And then when I went inside, there's probably stuff inside, but the whole inside. So I think from what I remember, I did seven, seven layers on the outside and seven layers on the inside. And I didn't need that many. I think I got the five. And I was like, well, you know, let me test it. Uh, I put a radio in here and I had FM on, blocked all the stations. AM, which is a smaller uh, wavelength, um, so it sneaks in little holes. <laughs> um, blocked those two. And I was like, cool. Uh, Use my two-way radio. I was blocking the signal because I had a REM pod. I put a REM pod in there and I had a two-way radio right next to it. And I was keying it up. Couldn't get it to go off. So I was like, cool. You know, that, that means it's blocking it. But I want to make sure, so I wrapped it twice more, just to be sure. And uh, I've used this. I mean, I had all the material except for the screening, which I think only cost me like three dollars for the roll. It wasn't it wasn't expensive at all. And then maybe a roll of aluminum foil because I, I might have stolen that from the kitchen and uh, had to replace it. So maybe another what two or three dollars for a roll of aluminum foil. So. I'm at six dollars, give or take, and then that was it. I had everything else on hand, so it was all scrap. Uh, so for less than ten dollars, I built a good Faraday box that every time somebody puts a ghost box or spirit box inside this, 
completely dead. They get no signal at all. And I love it. I, I absolutely love it because it's 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 one of those things where I've taken it to ghost hunts and you have the team leader that's like, oh, this is excellent. We use this all the time. The ghost box tells us it answers our questions no matter what. We get intelligent responses and that's great. And then I talk about this. All right, we'll put it in there. Put it in there. Nothing. They ask questions. They don't give no, not even static. It's actually like the uh, the one spirit box they put in there, and it was the one with the uh, like the reverb pe- pedal that's attached to it. It's like the big Huff version, yeah. which I know is Tim's favorite person. Uh, uh, yeah, besides besides Zavis, who I saw today, <laughs> he says hi. Um, <laughs> so, oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I lost my train of thought because that, that made me laugh. Uh, no, so <laughs> we were playing with that one. The, the, there was a group that had it, and it was talking, and it was doing the, 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 its, its ghost boss thing, like really annoying the shit out of me. Um, as soon as we put it in this, it changed to almost a like an ocean sound. Uh, I don't know if that was just because it wasn't receiving any signals and it was trying to figure out what the what to do, but it was like a that was it and I'm, and it was really bad because it was late at night it was dark and I was falling asleep because <laughs> I'm like this is so nice yeah, I was going to say that would put me to sleep yeah absolutely um, but I've had great luck with this I mean every time I've used it which isn't really often I don't want to make give you the impression like I've used it like hundreds of times you know a handful of times maybe a dozen times I've used it but it's it's done its job. It's blocked out the the radio frequencies, and there is no communication or no no hits or anything like that. So I definitely like this, and it was really easy to build. I mean, it, it took me like maybe two hours to put it together, you know. And I mean, I'm most of it. I either use staples, like uh, uh, industrial staples, because I wanted to get through the screening into the wood. And then, obviously, I have duct tape around the top. And that was just to, to cover the rough edges um, from the screen so I didn't uh, hurt myself. So there you go. That's one. Ugh. I got a question. We got a question about the Faraday box for you. Sure. How do you know the Faraday box doesn't block? How do you the know the Faraday box goes? doesn't block? The, go ahead. I think uh, either I'm on a delay or you're on a delay. Oh, sorry. Uh, you go ahead. Oh, maybe I. Now am. I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm All right. So, how doesn't how do you know the Faraday box doesn't block the energy ghosts need to talk? So that's a fair question. I don't. What I'm doing is controlling for the variable that I know about, and the variable that we know about that we can control is the actual purpose of the radio, which is to receive AM and FM signals. So that's my purpose. I mean. I actually, I mean, here's a thought, and you're welcome to give your thoughts, but I don't know how big a ghost is, if they exist. So I always open the lid and say, you know, get inside. <laughs> because, I mean, if they're only the shape of an orb, they should be able to fit. <laughs> but honestly, I mean, that question is a, is a, it's a hard question to answer because, one, we don't know that ghosts exist. And two, we don't know that if they do exist, the how do they communicate do they need some kind of uh, rf to to do that communication i would think no um because if people are actually hearing it without any devices then it's not it's it's not radio frequency it would have to be some kind of physical disturbance in the air um and and that should not affect what's going on here Uh, so that's the principle that i'm basing it off of there you go what else and, we got? And to me, real quick. Uh, sure. One more for you. I think the best thing that comes out of like stuff with that is, even if that's something they need to communicate with us or whatever, that's something that we're crossing off of. Well, they, okay, so this is what needs to be done. So right. it's, the more you can eliminate, the more it's like, okay, well, then we're, we'll do it your way. And we'll keep it to, to the closer to the facts until you're moving the goalpost, which is usually where it ends. Yeah, 
yeah, we eliminate the, the variables and we try to come down to, a, you know, narrow it down, uh, cattle shoot it into a, a very small area where we can actually analyze what's going on. Right. So cool. Are you caught off, Tim? Oh, Tim's I have one left. more for you. <laughs> I think oh, you're behind no, us for a few seconds. Like... Tim's trying out his fair day cage at his house. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't start till your ferret egg cage showed up. Hold on. Let me right. see. Kenny, how did it feel when Richard SS told you that he started using a Faraday box out of in the field? I loved it and hope more ghost hunters start doing this sort of thing. <laughs> Thanks, Red Man. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was really cool that um, we had that discussion and the, the details of that conversation, how it went. It was great. I mean, it, it was not only nice that he took my suggestion as a suggestion and not a snarky response, but that he he kept going with it, you know, and, and built his little homemade Faraday cage out of the turkey bins um, or turkey pans. That was really uh, uh, creative. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how good it worked because I, I'm not sure if he filled in all the gaps or had all the gaps covered. Um, because it is a makeshift thing with pre prefabricated pans, so I don't know how many openings there are. But, I mean, it's definitely a start in the right direction. And uh, I, I thought it was cool. So, there you go. All right. You caught up, Tim? Oh. I don't know. I hope I am. <laughs> I hate being on Tim, a delay. I'm not sure. Why don't you back out and come back in and see if that resets it? All right. And we will move on. John, um, how about you? What do you, you have a video, right? You were talking about yeah. a video. Set this up for us. All right. So um, I, I love the, the whole Faraday page thing, um, especially with stuff like spirit boxes and whatnot. So I found this video pretty much sounds like what you've done with yours, just on a uh, smaller scale. And it, it's even got a, uh, like a tester right there on the video. So I thought, Showing us for everybody here, you can kind of see what a Faraday cage, Faraday cage does, and what it, how it works in real time. So okay, cool. Well, let's give it a second to see if Tim pops back in, and uh, so that he doesn't miss the the awesome video, and maybe he can build a cage of his own. He's it's probably that Starlink satellite shit. <laughs> he's having trouble, <laughs> or I don't know if he's having storms or anything. Um, he didn't actually say if he was having any storm, so I don't know. Um, let's see. What else do we have before we get to the video? I want to wait till he gets on. So right. gets uh, I did want to say, I, when I was looking through this, there was a uh, there's a, something you got to keep an eye out for when you're working with Faraday cages is that there is a tendency to, they don't block stable or slowly ver varying magnetic fields. So there's still that possible chance that some of those are able to get through, but yeah. Yeah. You really have to test it. I mean, like I said, I, I tested this one and made sure that it did block it to my satisfaction. And then I still went beyond that just to make sure, because I mean, even um, when I, I have flaps over the lid, like that come down and, and cover more instead of the, the flap coming down like an inch, it's, it's a good, three and a half to four inches that it comes down. And I extended that because with the shorter lip, when I closed the lid down, it wasn't covering it enough. It was leaving gaps. So I was still getting a signal through. Okay. So that's why I extended that. So you definitely have to test it over and over again to make sure and, and keep up on it because like this gets beat up a little bit um, because I, when I take it to conferences or take it to events that I'm, I'm participating in, it gets shoved in, to the uh the car stuff gets piled inside of it so i can take it so um let me see i don't think tim is oh he sent me a message oh no that was not tim okay well we'll play the video and if he pops on i'll just jump him jump him in uh let's see here share screen share audio that one and here we go. So it's about three minutes, so get comfy and enjoy. 
just needed some metal street mesh, some wood strips, an alligator clip cable, and some basic tools you find in the hardware store. A roll of metal street mesh is about $10 to $20, and you'll have so much you can make as many Faraday cages as you want. To begin, measure out a 8 by 16 inch rectangle on the metal mesh. And cut out this rectangle with some heavy duty scissors. Now you want to measure 5 8 inch lengths of your wood strips. I'm using 3 8 by 3 16 wood, but you can use whatever you like. Then, carefully unroll your metal mesh so that it lays flat. Now, taking your light duty staples and your favorite little handy staple gun, you are going to staple the wood strips through the metal mesh. Take the first wood strip and apply it to the end. Be careful about your fingers. Staple the next wood strip about five and a half inches distant. Third wood strip about two and a half inches distant. The fourth wood strip about another five and a half inches distant. And the fifth wood strip at the end of the mesh. Now, as, as you can, can probably, probably tell, we're, we're using the wood strips as braces, and now that you've stapled them all, you can now shape the metal mesh into a small Ooh. little box, your Faraday cage. What's nice, nice about this is that it opens and closes easily, and you have ports on either side of the Faraday cage with which to manipulate your preparation for your experiments. To show it working, take your standard cockroach prep. Now here I've intentionally created a very noisy environment. I have my laptop hooked up to the wall outlet. I have my soldering iron on and the fluorescent lights on. And watch what happens when I turn on the spiker box. Too noisy for experiments. What can we do? Now take your alligator clip cable and clip it to the ground shield on the electrode connector. You can see this by looking at the spiker box on the side. Now place your spiker box into your varying cage. And clip the other end of the alligator cable to the screen mesh. Much better to see the ball. See those nice spots. Hmm. Now there is interesting physics reasons for why the Faraday cage works at all. Ask your teacher about it. Backyard brains, neuroscience for everyone. Awesome. If you're a homeowner, no, no, no stop. Get off. No commercials. Not for free. Ah. Uh. That was pretty decent. I have no idea where Tim is. <laughs> we lost him. We lost him. Oh yeah, my goodness! I saw that video and I thought, you know, that's something quick and simple and easy to easy to do. Um, I mean, yeah, that it's it's simple. The only thing I I'd worry about is that um, because of the open ends and that's grounded to it. So that is a different uh, setup where. I don't know unless you take apart the radios or ghost boxes, spirit boxes and stuff and find a grounding point like that. And I'm not sure where you would actually go to and then ground it to the cage. You, you need to close up the ends, but it looks like you could probably do it pretty simple um, by just adding in uh, another piece of wood or two and wrap it the other way um, and yeah. close it up. Yeah. I mean, you could have some fun with that. Oh yeah, for sure. It would be interesting. It would be interesting to do. Uh, all right, we might actually turn into either a short show or we'll uh, we'll do a, we'll do like some Q and A. But up, oh, Tim sees my message. Hopefully, he gets on. I'm gonna move on to the next thing that I built. Um. So up, oh, up. Oh, there he is. Tim, how do I look? How do I sound? You sound much better. You look good. Woo! It's the wine. <laughs> You all right? Like, I was like, where he's gone. Where is he? <laughs> I uh, restarted the modem. We had a lot of thunderstorms today, and it uh, it took out, not took out our modem, but it shut down the modem several times. So I thought maybe 
an okay. unplug, an actual unplug for a minute and a restart would do. All right, cool. Whoa. So yeah. So yeah, so, good show. Thanks everybody. <laughs> It was we great watched, seeing everybody. It's wonderful. We watched uh, John's video uh, on how to build a a small Faraday cage. Um, Thank so you, Bob. we're gonna awesome. We're gonna try that later. Uh, the next thing I got. Well, now that you're back, yes, you're up. So I'm what up. do you got? Okay. I want to do the um, the um, haunted object test. I guess, for lack of a better word, I'm getting my notebook because I'm sure there's gonna be some cool ideas here. Sweet. Um, so my, my thought is if I could get an alleged haunted object that has a history and a pretty clear report of something that happened when they got this object. So in other words, if somebody would have something and say stuff like this never happened until we got this, whatever object A is. And then once okay. we got object A, things started going crazy. And this, these are the things that we experienced. I would like to get that object and find somebody who would take that object, but not know that they have that object. And how I think I'll do that is I'm going to get three or four other objects that may or may not be haunted, or at least the best of my knowledge is that they don't have any haunting um, history with them. So I'm going to get like five people. And I'm just going to say anybody that wants to sign up, I'm going to send you something. I'll pay for the postage, pay for everything, and I will mail you something. You could get the haunted object. You might not get the haunted object. I, I, it's only going to be um, us that know where it is. I'll do one of those things where I'll give Kenny one of those <laughs> envelopes that are <laughs> sealed, sealed 17 times. <laughs> so I know he'll keep. I know he'll keep it honest. Um, so my thing is, is, I would like to see if people that get the objects will eventually, at least under some type of circumstance, begin to report the same thing that was reported prior to. Okay. Um, I think it would be more interesting if um, work on a time frame. So I, I maybe like three months per person. Okay. But then I would like to have the I'll pay for the postage to get the object back, all five objects. And then I'm going to randomize and except for I'll save, not say sending the haunted object to the back to the same person, but I'll randomize and I'll send it back out to the same five people. Right. Um, or maybe, maybe different five people. I don't know. I got to work on it um, and then see what their reports are. And um, I think it would be very interesting if the people that got the haunted object would report similar if not the very same activity that happened when, when the original, with when the original person that got the object began its claims. Right. So uh, it's the measurement's going to be, I'm sure, subjective. Um, so maybe it's going to take somebody else to like look at it. I'm not sure how I'm going to measure it just yet. Um, but I would like to see. I think it'd be interesting if an object that followed three or four different people over a course of three months of possession would have very similar, if not the same. Uh, reports of hauntings amongst people right. who don't know that it is haunted or not um, and are well aware that they are part of, an, a, of a test that um, they may or may not receive a haunted object at some point. Sounds so, good. yeah, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's a, a thing that I build, but it's an idea that I have. Um, right. So I got to get, uh, I got to get some people that won't sue me in case like they're house burns down or some wild shit happens and they're like oh it's because tim vickers sent me this haunted object <laughs> um so yeah um yeah i i i think i'm open for i'm open for crit for criticism and critique of that idea because it's all i think it's a good idea but it doesn't mean that because i think it's a good idea that it's a good idea um i'm sure that there's some type of flaws in there and i, I the the glaring flaw for me is how i'm going to measure if people have similar experiences, what if, um, you know, what if the people that do get the haunted object have experiences and they're the only ones that have experiences out of the other four? Um, there's my cat. <laughs> of the other four, <laughs> the cat's like, don't do it. It's dangerous. <laughs> Satan's with the <laughs> God be with you. You too, cat. <laughs> um, yeah. So 
is, is it would it still count if these people have at least if it's not the exact same haunted experiences but what if they have haunted experiences but then i would have to look and see another side interest to me is if people think they have the haunted object will i get reports from people that don't have the haunted object right which is so, going to be i i would suggest um a log book uh, and, and like a cheap log, like go to like Walmart and buy one of like a pack of those small uh, notebooks you can get for like a dollar or two yeah. and send that with it. Send send one with each object and have them put a daily like try to keep up. <laughs> Somebody wanted to see the meow cat. This is the one that meows all the time. Try to include a, a, a instructions that, hey, every day, do me a favor, just write in this date and if anything happened. And if they if something did happen that you found weird, write down the time and then describe it. Um, and if you're yeah. talking only like three months, that should be enough to fill the book because maybe it's like most days are probably going to be nothing. Um, if they have to fill a book, then, you know. Go buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you one. one. Cheap. I'll send it, you one. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. have them send that back. Well, yeah, I mean, you keep that book. You mark yes. it like test uh, one, um, you know, ver version one, group one, um, and whatever. And then send out a new book with the, with the second uh, round. Yes. And I, I, at least then, because you're, I, I, I hear you, you're kind of worried about what constitutes the activity associated with this thing if there is activity associated with this thing yes. so at least by the book we have a log and we can see if there's any pattern right uh, and just my my ultimate which would be a wonderful um you know obviously my it would be wonderful if um four people or three people end up reporting you know i don't want to say verbatim because that, that that would just be too pie in the sky Right. But if it was so if it was so close to the same thing, then that would be pretty interesting. I'm not going to say it's proof, but right. damn, that's going to be pretty interesting. You know, yeah. why is it? Why is this one object? Then you'd have to, like, take a look at the object and make sure there's not like contextual markers of the object. Like if I send out a crucifix <laughs> and people are like, oh, shit, um, <laughs> my Bible's caught on fire. You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, that's been done. <laughs> yeah, it has been done. It, those ended up being bullshit. But you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, a crucifix is definitely a contextual object. So you got to be careful. Uh, a a right. creepy doll is going to be a contextual object. It's because people are just going to have a reaction. Right. It's going to have to be something. I don't know. Like maybe different. it's going to yeah. be something different. Um, that really doesn't have, I'm shooting for and hoping for something that doesn't have a already like a haunted, uh, something that comes with folklore or something that you see in movies right. that, that just because you have this in your house and you know, the history, um, it's going to begin to psychologically, um, maybe begin to, um, have some effect on the person. Right. Um, when, for instance, um, when I when we were thinking about this before, one of the people that, that had volunteered something for me, they volunteered a set of um, leg irons that were used with um, um, slavery in the in the eighteen hundred. Well, I'm, I'm maybe eighteen hundreds, but not not good you know, during the slavery right. time. And, and I I really didn't want that because just because I don't want that. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. want to have a, that piece of that should belong somewhere in a museum for people to understand history. That's not for me to play with. But right. the idea of it made me think, well, if I send that to somebody and tell them what that is, then already they're going to not be comfortable with that in their house, if that makes sense. So it's going yeah. to already begin a process of of uh, of beginning to have emotional states, psychological states that are going to report weird things. I think, I, I think that's right. my prediction. I don't know if it's true, yeah. but I, right. I think it, it will. Exactly. It, would be, it would pretty much be like priming them to yeah. look for that kind of thing. So yes. Have, yeah. have you thought of maybe um, taking from like maybe other cultures, um, something that we don't 
really follow here and seeing if maybe some of the stuff that they say happens in their culture. Oh, I, knew, I knew a good idea was going to pop up. <laughs> Hold on, John. I like that, buddy. Where's my pen? I got my notebook out. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to write in wine intoxication, so I won't be able to read this tomorrow. Unless I do. <laughs> good thing we record these shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can review it. I'll be like, what the hell was I writing last night? Jesus. Uh, time, uh, time marker 35 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so look for something cultural again, and, and I, I want to be respectful. Really so yeah, yeah, I want to be respectful. I don't want to. I don't want to use. I don't want to use something from a cult. I under. I respect what you're saying. I think that's a really good idea, but I think it's also important to be respectful as well. Oh, absolutely, right. And it's it honestly. I mean, it, it's at least one object is based on availability. Because you have a very specific and narrow criteria here. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I guess the only way to do that would be if we get something that would be very, um, uh, it would, it, we would have to get five of the same things from the five of the same type of, in other words, we would have to get, um, I, if you got handcuffs that were used in a prison that was notoriously uh, violent and had lots of death then you would need five handcuffs from that prison, but only with the one that would say, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that right. all yeah. of them would have the same. That's really hard to, yeah. Yeah. Cause to get the look, I mean, unless you have brand new handcuffs, you're, you're like, yeah. how do you know what the history was? Right. So yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. You, you got your work cut out for you. Well, I can do it. I, it's going to yeah. be a mess and I'm going to fuck a lot of stuff up, but that's part of it. That's Don't part worry. of it. Don't yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. So oh, I think yeah. we do have some questions that go with this. Mm -hmm. um, so let me see. Uh, let's see. The, 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 let's see. I think this one. What if a person who gets the haunted object is already haunted or possessed? Is it a fight for domination? <laughs> <laughs> Wait for are we looking at multiple personalities kind of thing? Good one, well, Melissa. <laughs> Number one, there's going to be a nice waiver for this. Um, yes. That's going to waive the responsibility should two demons get in a fight at your house. <laughs> no damage. I see yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It would be great to see, but uh, I don't want to pay for whatever happens. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm, I've heard Dave talk several times about sending out questionnaires of... Um, Oh, I can't remember what the exact name of it is, but it's it's basically your belief. It's a belief scale of the paranormal. Um, mm -hmm. And it's to get a general understanding of who you're working with and their beliefs in the paranormal so that somehow um, you can at least uh, have an understanding when you get it back. You can rate the amount of, um, you know, I, I would think that you could possibly predict and I could be wrong, but my my theory is you could predict, or your my hypothesis is you could predict um, that people that would rate very high on the paranormal belief scale would report back many more experiences than someone that did right. not. Yeah. So if you gave the object to somebody with a very low belief scale, you probably should scale or imagine that you're going to get back very little than you would relative to somebody that would. Right. So there would be a need. There would be a need. There would be a a need to um, have a an avenue to to weigh that out, and that would be Dave with statistics because, <laughs> because I can't do okay. that shit. That article yeah. I sent you earlier, uh, the one I said I got sidetracked, the rabbit hole I went down, that actually talks about that a yeah. lot. And how how it's uh, people that believe more will see things more, and it c confirms it just the way it, the way the mind works uh, and things you already believe. It's it's tremendous. Um, but I yeah. think a way that you could possibly rule out that uh, if the place is already haunted by something else, you're trying to figure out if this person seeing this one specific thing is, hey, what is your normal, normal everyday things that you see happening if you think your place is haunted, um, and kind of use that to rule out once you get this object, it's not okay. from those things, it's from this specific object. So right. kind of like a basic. All right. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, oh, 
<laughs> can we clean the kitty is on it <laughs> um Heath wants to know is the, the haunted object coming from Kenny's mystery museum we can't Robert. disclose that information right now <laughs> and what defines the one haunted one object haunted what defines it to be haunted that's a good question and I will say my my initial thoughts are if I just get an object that has that comes from a person or a family or a group of people that have it that say we didn't have this happen prior to getting this, which is typically how that story usually goes when someone gets a, an object and they think that it's haunted. As long as they can identify a few things that happened specifically after they got that object, then I think I would take it because then I could have something to measure or at least look at to see if, um, if those are replicated in different people. So my ultimate goal would want, from my ultimate goal, would I would hope that if it's haunted or possessed or something's attached to it, that there would be similar events um, that would follow this compared to right. events that followed the other four that were nothing. Okay. Fair enough. And we do have a question for John. John. All right, John. John's getting his question now. Woo, John, do you get out in the field and ghost hunt? If so, anything stick out that got your attention? You know, my ghost hunting was a lot back in the, in the 90s. Uh, and I kind of veered off into other stuff, but I, I'm trying to get back into it. There's a local place that was talking about doing some ghost hunting around here. I said, hey, you guys you guys need a skeptic to tag along. And I didn't hear back from them. <laughs> no, that's a no, John. <laughs> Trust <laughs> us. That's a that's a definite no. Um Try try another group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to get back out into it now from a different perspective of things to kind of see, you know, what I see now from things I did back then. And shit's changed oh, yeah. So yeah. I would suggest that you you probably don't broadcast the skeptic part. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm not I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. It's it's definitely not a bad thing, but not every group is open to it. And, and if they see skeptic right away, they might kind of think, oh, he's just going to come in and debunk stuff. Um, so maybe leave that off your resume when, <laughs> when you apply and just say, hey, I want to join, you know, see what you guys are doing. And once you get in, then you start screwing them. <laughs> <laughs> you take them down from the inside. <laughs> All right. So, um, like my my purpose for actually coming up front with that specific group with the, with that is because I was hoping to find a group that's honestly trying to look for information instead of looking right. for confirmation. Um, because with people like that, no matter what you say or do, they're, they're sorry. <laughs> I was, All right. For right now, just I was hoping to get a group that was honest, and apparently that's not going to happen here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's good though. That's good. That's good. It's yeah. good that you're identifying it too. So, uh, I mean, any any time you're welcome. If I go out, you go with me. Um, yeah, I would love to go with you guys. If they don't, if they don't, if they don't see quality, then that's on that man. Yeah, um, I mean, and, and things are changing. I just I'm going to insert this real quick. Today I was at the the Para Unity conference um, set up, had my skeptic booth, and I had all positive experiences. Everyone that stopped by, they saw what I was doing, they loved it, they asked questions, they were curious. Even when they told me stories, and I didn't like immediately accept it at face value, and instead discussed it, they weren't offended, they weren't upset, they said, "Oh, okay." And it was fun actually seeing some of the people react as if like, oh, shit, I have to defend my position. OK. And they would try and we would talk more about it and then realize maybe it's something else or maybe it's this. or Maybe it's that. It was really good conversation. So, I mean, saying you're a skeptic is not a bad thing. It really yeah. isn't. But I think it might still spook some groups. Right. Uh, so but I, I think let's say. uh um, Melissa said something about honest. Oh, here we go. Honestly, I feel like you dodged a bullet with that one. Do you really want to be alone in the dark with people, with <laughs> people around you, <laughs> around here? <laughs> <laughs> what you trying to say there, Melissa? Hmm. All right. 
Um, John, do you have anything else? I actually do. Uh, oh. kind of a couple quick, quick ones. Sure. Uh, so, are you here. done, Tim? I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Go ahead, John. Here, here's an easy, easy one. Uh, you guys might have talked about this on a previous show uh, with the Ouija board. Um, is I found that you, you could have everybody in there wearing a blindfold. So when they're spelling out the answers or whatever, they don't know, unless they're really good at their shit, but um, a blindfold you, usually seems to stop the, the spirit from spelling things properly or at all. <laughs> yeah. And it's free. I, I mean, so. it's cheap. Right. It's cheap. I mean, blindfolds are, you don't have to get a, like a, a real blindfold. You can just get like a scarf and just, there you go. Right. They're they're pretty cheap, so yeah. What else you uh, got? There was another one. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. And I I wish I thought about back in the day is using a half inflated helium balloon, or if you have a little bit more money, there's the, the powered smoke. And what that is is people say, "Well, I felt something brush across my hair or something." Have this balloon or the like powder. Smoke in the air, so you can see if it maybe it's from a draft that's come from somewhere. It, it helps you find potential drafts in the area. Kind of, stuff. kind of like a smoke machine, right? Yes, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I have one, and I think that's a good idea because it definitely will. You will see the the air currents um, blowing through the smoke. You'll you'll get the idea of where they're coming from and and be able to track them down. So that's pretty good. I like that. And the last good one that I found, the last good one that I found for this that's really super easy is uh, that people are saying there's items being moved, um, putting baby powder down around. If, if, it, you're, if you can do this, uh, putting baby powder around the area so you can see if people have walked up to it or, you know, stuff like that. If it's more people than right. spirits. Right. There's there's a couple things to do with that because uh, like I know down down in my living room we have a a fake fireplace uh, entertainment center so it's one of those like electric fireplaces that you know it's just lights <laughs> but it puts out heat um, mm -hmm. but there are I have three little Buddha statues that do the hear no see no uh, speak no evil uh, poses and. I've noticed that they're they're about like three inches off the from the edge, but I've noticed like every couple of days one of them is not only turned around but almost at the edge, ready to fall off. And I never see it like in process. I never see it actually move until the one day I was I was what was I doing? Oh, um, oh I should, probably shouldn't say this because Donna's in the chat room. Um, but she was out one day and I was playing with my sword in the living room uh, because <laughs> <You're in trouble. laughs> Star Wars was gone and I, the lightsaber was up here, but the, my, I had a sword downstairs. Don't ask why. And I was playing with it and I was going around <laughs> and as I was doing that and kind of like jumping around because I'm a big kid, I watched the Buddha shake and, and turn around till it faced the back and as it turned it moved towards the edge and i was like oh shit and i started bouncing and bouncing and yeah like donna says it, it's from walking around there was a there's a spot on the floor where as you walk across it it moves it a little bit and over you know 10 20 times of walking back and forth between the living room and dining room it moves all the way around and comes to the edge so I mean, that's a good idea to put powder down if you're not sure, because it's a slow process. And with the powder down, you can actually see the track where it moves right. um, and it helps you out. And <laughs> oh, yeah, Donna exercises in the living room, so that helps. So but yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, and I also suggest a video camera too. you know, Absolutely. see what happens, see what happens with that, because that's that's always interesting to see things how they move and over time you know like there was a there was a video that i watched 
Yeah, it wasn't your Jedi powers. That's right. Um, well, maybe it was. Maybe it's untapped potential. We'll see. Um, there was a video that went it went viral like two years ago, and it was in a museum where yeah. a museum piece was turning. I remember and, that. And, yeah, it was from the traffic outside, and it slowly, I mean, we're talking over hours, turned, turned around. So having it, that footage and being able to speed it up to, to see really helps. Cool. Tim, anything to add? No, I think you got it. Um, yeah, I, the thing that came to my mind, I started to look at it because I'll never spell it correctly and I'll never pronounce it correctly. I don't think so. I think it's called an anometer. And um, my dad, of course, I'm sure there's probably a lot more sophisticated equipment now. But you know, when you around here in West Virginia, um, a lot of coal miners carried these really cool pieces of equipment. They're really fine. They're kind of small. They look fragile, like they shouldn't be underground. But what miners used them for was they would stop and they have fans in the center of them. And they're really oh, yeah. very nicely balanced. And they're to check for the amount of airflow while you're underground through different shafts. And they measure quite quickly and they also measure very slight breezes. I can't remember, I had my dad's for a long time um, because I just, well, as a kid, I thought it was really cool. I think I ended up breaking it, <laughs> but um, it was really cool. It was almost like a great toy when I was a kid. It was just fantastic. And um, um, I don't think that it'll show you the direction unless you use the speed at which the turn, um, uh, the speed at which the it reads as the direct. I, I would imagine if you face the speed, the 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 breeze head on, the speed would probably be the highest, and then you could turn and watch it slow down as it moved away. Um, but yeah, that that was just something that came to my mind when when you were talking about looking for breezes. Um, it would be an anemometer. There you oh, go. That's I it. One. Yep. That's not like the kind. Yeah, that's much more fancy. It's, it's small. Yeah, it's smaller. But yeah, yeah. I have one. I use that for yeah breezes, drafts um, mm -hmm. around windows and doors and stuff just to see. Um, because yeah, you're right. That little fan. Yeah. Really, it's easy to make it go. It's very balanced. Yeah. So it's really helpful when someone's like, "Oh, there is no draft," and you're like, "Oh, well, hold on." There it goes. There it goes. <laughs> um, really easy. And, and it's good. You can get them pretty cheap now. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually, Amazon has actually this exact one for 16 bucks. Did I say it correctly? Is it anameter? I don't know that part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Google and see what I just said. Hold on. <laughs> I, think, I think I looked up for like wind speed meter and it came up with that. I was like, oh, cool. All right. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. Oh, holy cow, I can't believe I remembered that. Panameter. Panameter. And, and most interesting that, that it measures wind speed and wind pressure. Yeah. There you go. It's it's a handy uh handy little tool and it's it's really it's I because I think stuff like this, even though we didn't build it, um, but um it really helps to demonstrate it. It helps to to make that impact, that physical impact, because you can say there's drafts or something in a house, but showing them, hey, it's moving the fan. I'm putting mm -hmm. it here. It's spinning because there's air coming in. That yeah. really makes it a bigger impact uh, on someone that is not willing to believe you just on your word. So definitely like that. Uh, all right, cool. Good. You got you it. <clears throat> what do you got? I think the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was me or you that slurred dr the dr shit. The draft. <laughs> it was you, bitch. <laughs> it must have been me. <laughs> so from now on, animators measure how many giraffes are in your house. <laughs> in case you can't look and count. So. <laughs> oh, God. Damn. That's funny. All right. Um, I have one more item to show, and then we can, uh, we can close out. Okay. Um, this is for Pendulum users so this is this is a pretzel jar so it's a plastic jar that, that had pretzels in it i ate them all because they were <laughs> yummy yes and what i did was put the pendulum through the lid and uh basically i glued on a clamp 
on the top. So there's padding here. This is just foam padding to cover this, this clamp. And the pendulum is clamped into it so that I can actually move this and it doesn't affect the pendulum. So, because as I understand it, and this is coming from people that 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 use pendulums for dousing purposes, like to find things on maps and all that stuff, bitching about pencil. I'll remember that. <laughs> you think you're in trouble for the sword? It was the pretzel. <laughs> you're not worried about the sword. No, no care about the sword. But I ate the pretzels. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I can empathize priorities. with that. Priorities. Uh, so basically, as as I'm told. As long as the person can hold the chain, mm -hmm. their, and I'm sorry to do this, their energy goes through the chain. That's right, bitches. Drink. I drank all <laughs> my wine already. It was a lot of wine. And it gets to the, the crystal at the bottom, and it allows it to move. So with this, you can still hold the chain, but you cannot manipulate. There's no uh, idiomotor effect going on because you can't. You simply can't uh, affect this on the bottom. And it's pretty simple. You can't blow on it either because it's in the jar. The only hole is up top, and you ain't blowing into that because it's it's almost completely covered. So that's a do-it-yourself thing. I mean, I already had everything on hand. And, and honestly, if you don't have clamps like this, I got a whole jar of these clamps, I think like 25 or 30 of them at Harbor Freight. And I think it was like two, two or three dollars, maybe four dollars for them. And the foam that was in a pack, I got <laughs> at like Walmart or Target something, another couple of dollars. And then the jar I already had because I eat all our pretzels. <laughs> so I mean, it, again, under ten dollars, probably under five dollars for. The whole setup and you can take it and have people play with it you know hey if you can do dousing with a pendulum here's your chance show me show me it moves and uh it's been very helpful uh even just as an intimidation of a uh, uh, tool because i don't promote it as something to prove that it's fake and i want to make that clear i always say that this is a tool to test because if it's working as they say you should still be able to make this move so go ahead and do it and the majority of people don't do it they refuse to even try and that tells me a lot that really does tell me a lot about it um and i really wish they would i really wish they would try it i mean once once or twice they've tried it and nothing has happened um, well, it's moving in a circle behind you yeah Ooh. yeah that's... I originally, honestly, I originally built this because there was somebody that they they used the, the pendulums, but her claim was that from across the room, she could be on one side of the room and somebody holding this on the other and swinging it. And when they stopped, she could make the pendulum stop moving. Like it would be moving like this and she could make it stop immediately. Like stop still. And I was like, I did the same thing, John. And like that look, I was like, wait, wait, that's, right. that's reverse. <laughs> that's the reverse of what everyone else says. But, and I, I said it several times, I'm like you're saying if I'm holding this across the room and I go like this and then I stop within a couple seconds, you can make that pendulum stop swinging. And she's like, yes. I said, well, I have a test for you. So I actually stood here. I sat here one day and over 10 times I would go like this. Well, do this, put it down, and then I would time it to see how long it would swing back and forth before it came to pretty much a dead stop. And I think I was up to like 10 minutes or 12 minutes just to have a baseline. And when I approached her at the next conference where she was at, she absolutely refused to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasted a lot of my time, but I got my answer. Well, right. here, I remember growing up here, and I don't know if it's an Appalachian cultural thing or something else, but I remember that 
uh, people would use pendulums to see if a pregnant person was going to have a boy or a girl. And it was supposed to, I can't remember, um, it was a circle for one thing and a line for, you know, a direct line for another, and I can't remember which it was. Yeah, I, I remember that as well. Uh, it was like pulled it right over the stomach and yeah. it was back and forth for one and circle for the other. Yeah. 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 I've heard different things. Yeah. And I'm still, I mean, anyone who wants to try it, I'll be in Gettysburg next month. M- next month. And <laughs> Much I know I'm, just, Ooh, you, I'm starting to slur too. I, I'm, I'm not even drinking. <laughs> Yours is uh, exhaustion, probably. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm yeah. really tired. Um, but yeah, I'll be in Getty, Gettysburg next week with uh, with with this guy. <laughs> I did it right. <laughs> this guy. Look how fast I can do it now. It's just point where you're not, Woo! and it works. <laughs> there you go. Um, so come on out and, and and try it. So we'll have some fun. All right. So I think that's it. That's all the ones I really want to go over because we're at an hour right now. So let's wrap this up. Um, John. You can go first. Closing thoughts. What do you think overall? Closing thoughts? Uh, I'm, I learned some great stuff tonight that I didn't even consider, like your, your pendulum thing. That's fucking brilliant. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that we gave people some ideas that they can use on their own and hopefully we get a little a little closer to finding the truth. So, right. Um, and, and always, for me, the, the Best and free, it's free, is knowledge. Mm-hmm. Get the knowledge of the things that they're they're claiming that uh, the whatever the spear box or whatever. Get, find out as much as you can about those things and then ask them questions and see if they even know what the hell they're doing with it with, with it themselves. So, okay, absolutely cool. Mm-hmm. All right, Tim, um, I love it. I love stuff like this. Is uh, this is I just enjoy this. I, I like trying to come up with ways to test something, even if it's um, um, kind of bizarre. I just I really do. Um, I like learning um, and I like that coming up with ideas to test claims like that haunted object. And uh, it doesn't cost a lot. Um, right. But I think the flip side of that is to make sure you share however it turned out because that's important as well. If nothing happened, then you need to share that nothing happened. And you know, you let people look at it, let people tell you, oh, I think maybe you did this wrong. And then you can adjust it and try to go back. So um, I, I can't, I can't reinforce enough that, you know, you might make a prediction and then come up with a test. And then that test fails your prediction or your prediction did not, <laughs> didn't predict the end of the results. But um, I think it's important whether it's a failure or, or a push or, or a success to to put it out there for other people, because otherwise, how are you going to learn? Um, I'm certainly never the smartest person in the room. So I, that's the way I like to say, you know, I, I'm just never. So I like to put it out and um, and let somebody take a look at it and say, well, here's here's I think is a mistake. So you you could try this and then you can redefine it and then you can go back and try it again. Right. Um, I think that's pretty much with anything. Um, the secret is, is getting feedback from people that uh, have more expertise in what you're doing than, than you do. Exactly. And take that, take it, take the critique and learn from it and then design something better. And then when you're done with that, guess what you do? You share that information as well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> hey, my <laughs> wife. There she is. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I'm the only there. person in the room, I am the only. So I am the smartest person. When I'm there the you smartest. go. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the cat's there. <laughs> <laughs> the cat. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, all right. So I I agree. I mean, it, I think I think these kind of things are great for all of us because all of us can do it. These are simple procedures, um, simple tests, simple things to design. I mean, you can take literally stuff that you might have around the house and build a little testing uh, device sure. or put together a little experiment and, you know, find out some more. I think that some of these gadgets that I have um, or that we can build, they can be a, a 
two sides of a coin here. It's it's a good wake up call for a lot of people that have a deep seated belief in in something like they can douse or they can use a pendulum to find people or things and showing them uh, these little little devices that restrict certain movements that restrict their ability to manipulate. Um, it takes that variable out and shows them that, all right, this is not what you think. It's something else. Um, and it, it could be, it can be a good wake up call um, because it's, it smacks them in the face. It's right there. It, they can't avoid it, especially when you're at a conference and there's a lot of people watching. I mean, you cannot avoid that at all. Um, on the other side of the coin, if something does happen, if something extraordinary does happen, it gives us something really extraordinary and interesting to look at and to and to study more. So, I mean, that's my purpose. It's it's not to make fun of people or make them look silly in front of a crowd. That's not my purpose, even though I was just joking about something like that uh, along those lines. But it's to say, hey, let's see if this is true. If it's not, we have our, our reason why. But if it something does happen, hey, that's a new, that's a whole new world there that we can explore. Like, I would love it. I had a woman today take the, the dousing rod stuff that, I, I mean, I've shown this plenty of times, so that's why I didn't really get into this, but she tried this today, like really hard, really trying to make the rods cross. And we stood there for a long time, like an uncomfortable amount of time <laughs> where it was like, <sighs> All right, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, how long are we going to do this? Uh, and nothing, no movement, except for her her shaking, um, which is her natural shaking. But other than that, that was that was all. And uh, it really, it, I think it really had an impact on her. Um, <laughs> skeptic to bunch of cat toy used in paranormal experiments. <laughs> oh, I got a story about that too. <laughs> um, I'll save that for next week, though. Uh, but that's about it. So I'm done. Uh, you guys have anything coming up? Um, John. In Gettysburg. Oh, sorry, John. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went to my uh, got Let's Learn shit uh, back on finally tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Yes. Um, awesome. Discussing uh, diabetes and the, the things that I've learned since finding out that I have diabetes. Uh, not not a lot yet, but that's what shit is about is learning. So. Okay. Cool. I, th I think that's a an awesome idea. I mean, yeah. I think we get into paranormal stuff, but there's also a whole lot to learn. And you have personal experience in that. And um, getting that information out there might reach somebody that might need to hear someone else yeah. that, that has questions just like you do or information that you do. I think that's really cool, John. Yeah. I did sharing information like that and, and, you're you're pretty much taking us on the journey with you you know as you learn you're you're sharing it with us we're learning about it and yeah like tim said i mean that that might help somebody that's struggling with it and how to deal with it or or how to cope with it i mean and and watching you go through it and learning and and dealing with it and pushing through would be inspiring to somebody else so awesome job dude love it thanks tim what do you got Oh. I will be, I'm going to put this up because this is oh, kind good. of, yeah, yeah. Yes, we are going to be in, in Gettysburg and we are going to do a live show that as it works out, um, it's going to be our 100th show. So we are fighting tooth and nail not to miss a show no matter what until Gettysburg. Even I think if it just comes down to one of us doing a 15 minute show, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. Yeah. Open mic night for 10 minutes. Good night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It counts, but yes, we, and we want. I, me personally, I, I want to meet so many people. I look forward to uh, um, getting to meet so many people. I think awesome. it's going to be fun. We, I want as many people to come on, sit, sit in the chair with us, uh, get on the show, ask questions, answer questions. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I really look forward to it. Awesome, yeah, that, I'm I'm excited about this. All right, so for me, yes, I have. Uh, well, first, I do a show every Friday night except for next Friday because I'm off. Um, but I do a show called The Skeptical Help Bar. If you haven't seen it, why not? Uh, shame on you. Shame on you. Uh, it's 
Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I stream it to YouTube and Facebook. So come on, check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, at least I think so. Next week, let's see. I have secret stuff coming up next week, which I'll tell you about when I eventually do come back um, on my show. But the following uh, event will be August in Gettysburg. I'll be with uh, Tim and Dave. And hopefully a whole bunch of other people really excited about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be such a fun weekend. Uh, and I just talked to Pam and Steve, who are the people that run it. Um, I saw them today. I talked to them today. Really looking forward to it. They have bands, like a whole bunch of bands lined up. So he's like, bring a lawn chair. Bring a lawn chair and just sit outside and, and enjoy the bands because they're going to be playing all weekend. So I'm like, Yay! but I'll be inside working. (laughs) Uh, October 20th to 23rd, I'll be in Las Vegas, Nevada for PsyCon, and uh, I'll be speaking on the big stage Friday, sometime Friday. I don't know when, but I'll be talking there. So if you have the means, I highly recommend you come out, hang out. It's it's Vegas, baby. I mean, (laughs) live it up. (laughs) Uh, But besides that, there's a few other projects that I'll hopefully I'll be able to announce later. Um, that are in the works, but that's it. So, all right. right. I mean, great show. I had fun. This was nice. And uh, yeah, I thank we're, you, we're... Dave, for. Uh, geez, oh my God! Thank what? you, John. Thank Whoa. you, John, for sitting in for Dave. I think John's uh, poly poly uh, what is it, poly juice poly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, is wearing off because m- maybe he's like morphing back into Dave. I don't it's, know. it's the wine. I'm telling you, like I ran out of. Um, You're so used to, to it. <laughs> it is. Everybody's used I to know. it. I know. Yeah. Thank you, John, for saying it. it's. It's very nice. And it, it's very. I really yeah, appreciate so, it. Coming uh, here and talk with you guys, and it's, it's always a great time. Right? You guys are awesome. We got to end the show before <laughs> Tim starts calling me like Frank or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't or, work. <laughs> no, I started to, though. <laughs> but that's just uh, that's rubbish. So, uh, oh, oh, all right, all right, guys. I did want to thank you to the people in the comments for uh, the kind words about the diabetes and stuff like that. I, I appreciate it. I saw all of it, so thank you guys. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we will see you uh, next week. So, have a great weekend, the rest of the weekend, enjoy it, and be safe. We'll see you later. Bye. Good night.